各位观众，大家好，今天欢迎大家来到我们 CIX 美洲华尔街节目。那么我们这个节目呢，最近有所改版哈，就是我们将会走进一些上市公司，这些上市公司呢，呃，都是我们一些商业客户，但是啊、呃，他们也有一定的上涨的一个空间，或者说一种发展的潜力。我们让这个投资人直接通过我们的视频，能够了解这些公司到底在干什么。那么第一期呢？我们要做的事情呢，就是呃连线哈、啊，我当时和呃 My Easy Smoke Inc 的公司的老总 Dan 啊，他是一个老美，那么我们和他的一个对谈。那么 My Easy Smoke 大家可以看图一哈、啊，它是一个呃电子烟的一个公司。什么叫电子烟呢？大家都知道，这是一个快速消费品，也是非常啊、呃、成长非常快呃快的一个公司，是几几百亿的一个未来的一个发展的市场。那么他最近呢推出了一个非常有趣的新闻，大家待会儿会可以看到哈，就是他们推出了一个把这个电子香烟通过一个直销的一种方式呢推广到销户消费群当中，也是一个非常全新的，在这个新兴的行业当中一个全新的一个发展的一个模式。那么他的。公司的股票代号呢是 XRMB 啊，图一当中呢也看到它的流通盘、发行盘三千九三千多万和两千多万的流通盘。来，大家下面呢来马上连线我们当时在 Studio 拍摄的这个呃这一段的访谈。好，谢谢。呃，大家好，欢迎大家来到美洲华尔街节目哈。首先我说中文啊、呃，在我旁边的是 Dan 啊、呃、，My Easy Smoke Company 股票代号是。呃、uh, ，X R M B， OK， 呃、uh, ，那么 Dan 呢是做 e cigarettes， 就是电子烟的一家公司哈。那么他们现在的 focus 呢，可能是通过呃这个 multi level 的一个方式呢，来呃行销他们的 e cigarettes。这个是一个非常非常 hard 的一个 concept。大家可以看，我平时呢偶尔抽烟，那么这个 e cigarettes 呢，它有很多好处，就是没有。啊，烟雾也不会有二手烟，而且非常健康的。那么现在我们来啊、uh, ，interview Dan. Dan, how are you? Very good, Warren. Thank you.、Uh, we appreciate being able to come back and visit with you again. Sure, sure. Oh,、uh, okay. Dan,、uh, first questions.、Uh, who's your manufacturer? It's coming from China, right? Can you introduce a little? Bit? Yeah, yeah. So we can. I mean, as we all know, in in、uh, markets that are growing like this, that Ch China is is. Is the core supplier for most consumer products throughout the world.、Um, that really is one of the strengths of our company.、Uh, we're a 15-year-old company that is now getting into the electronic cigarette market, and、uh, the majority of our time has been working with vendors in China and exporting products into the United States.、Uh, we went through quite an extensive、uh, process of evaluating the customers. And that again really is where the strength of our company comes in.、Uh, we spent four to six weeks digging around in China, and、uh, as we all know,、uh, anytime something is growing、uh, in the Chinese market, there are hundreds and then thousands of traders.、Um, and with our experience, we've been able to track down the four or five major players in the electronic cigarette industry. That are manufacturing products,、uh, a very high-quality product, and are also supplying the electronic cigarettes for some of the major brands that are currently being sold in America right now. Okay, great. And also, let's talk about recent FDA activity and propose they are proposing、uh, guidelines. Can you give me an update how to how your product will meet these upcoming regulations? Yeah, yes, actually. You know our company and a few of the other companies that are reputable and that have good products. It kind of ties back into Warren's first question about who we're working with in China.、Um, we're working with one or two of the major suppliers of electronic cigarettes, and and while the FDA here in America is just now coming into the market and setting guidelines. Uh, for the importation of the product into the American marketplace, the electronic cigarette as a whole has been shipped and sold into Europe for well over a decade, and、uh, all of the factories that we're working with go through extremely stringent rules in order to import the products into China. There are a number of organizations.、Uh, one is, is is a CE certification. That certifies all the electronic components of our products.、Uh, 
the other is, is, a, is a, a, a company called ROS, R-O-H-S, and this company uh, works with hazardous materials or potentially hazardous materials. And the third company is a company that's probably the largest uh, consumer products company in the world. It's called SGS. And they work with just about every product that is sourced out of China. Um, and they get into lead and paint and kids' products. Um, and, and really their focus here on our electronic cigarette is the nicotine. The nicotine is the one chemical in there that has to be produced right. So by working with good factories, and, and additionally working with factories that are already following very stringent guidelines to import the products into Europe, uh, we're excited about what the FDA is going to come in with because we've made a, a concerted effort to follow all those guidelines already. Um, so when they do come out with their guidelines, we think it's going to eliminate quite a bit of our competition and uh, we're already following most or all of the guidelines that we anticipate them coming out with. So it's a very positive thing as far as we're concerned. Okay, good. Um, that's all good information, Dan. Let's talk about pricing in comparison to a normal package of cigarettes. What will be a comparable uh, purchase of your product cost on any package by package base? Yeah, so the exciting thing about this product category is two things. One is that you're saving the consumer's health. We are all very well aware of the health risks associated with the smoking of a traditional cigarette. Uh, roughly 500, 1,500 people a day or half a million people a year are dying due to uh, illnesses associated with the smoking of cigarettes. Uh, and you're, we're also saving the consumer's pocketbook. So really we have three products that we're entering into the marketplace. One is a disposable product. This disposable product is packaged and it has one cigarette in it that the consumer can smoke and when they complete the, the, the smoke in it, they throw it away. Uh, this particular product retails for approximately $9.99 or $10 and it's equivalent to two packs of cigarettes. So depending on where you smoke, in New York a pack of cigarettes is $14, in California it's $8. This is a nice easy impulse purchase for the end user and, it's, and they're saving their health and they're also saving their pocketbook. We have two other items. Uh, one is, a, the second item is a starter kit. Now this starter kit has a battery that comes out and it has three filters. And each one of these filters is equivalent to two packs of cigarettes. So the consumer is purchasing a battery and six packs of cigarettes. The battery recharges with a USB uh, attachment. And this retails for $19.99. So again, they're saving their health and they're saving their pocketbook because six packs of cigarettes are $40, $50. So it's one-third the cost of a traditional cigarette. And then the real savings comes in once they're smoking our starter kit, and then they come in and purchase our uh, refills. Now this refill package has five filters in it, which is equivalent to a carton of cigarettes. And it retails for $14.99. So here uh, it's 20% of the expense that they spend on their traditional tobacco uh, okay. uh, products. Saving some money. Save, also, there's no tax on this. And there's cigarette. no tax on it right now, anyway. Yeah, it's very expensive yeah, yeah, on yeah, the, uh, very, regular cigarettes. Yeah, it's very expensive. So then not only uh, is the consumer saving money, but then the retailers that we're working with are also enjoying a healthier profit margin. So they are also very, very excited about this, this, this whole category as a whole. Okay, uh, can you give me an uh, update on the January market expectation for these products over the next five years, the whole market? <clears throat> this market, this is really a once in a lifetime opportunity for uh, any business and, and I'll get into it in a, in a little bit as to why now it's taking the attention of some of the major tobacco companies. But uh, the, the 
industry was projected to hit 300 million in sales in the year of 2013, this current calendar year. Uh, the industry achieved $1 billion in annual sales in the same year. So it's exceeding all of the expectations that have been set for the industry. Um, now uh, the industry experts are saying that it's going to grow now from a $1 billion market to a $10 billion market by the, uh, within five years. So by the end of 2017 or the end of 2018. And because of this growth, it's caused you know, the attention of uh, major tobacco companies. RJR Reynolds and Marlboro are now entering the space because they're slowly seeing their market share drop while they're seeing the market share of the electronic cigarettes rising. Um, so they're, they're getting into this business as well uh, you know, f f from the standpoint of uh, it, it being so profitable and, so, and actually from the standpoint of wanting to make money uh, where most of the leaders in this industry and the people, the companies like ours that have been on the forefront of this industry have gotten into this market um, with, the, with the idea of helping people that are addicted to cigarettes. So there's a little bit of a conflict there, but it's extremely exciting um, and, and we're certainly happy to be a part of it. Great. Um, so I also, the very interesting story is uh, I, understand your, I understand your company is about to launch a new partner. Uh, website for those persons interested in become wholesale your products. Can you give me an update how this in new initiative is progressing? Yes, and it, uh, that's a very good question, Warren, and it kind of goes back to the question a as to the size of the market and some of the competition that we're seeing. So in order for companies like ours and other companies that are in the market uh, to be successful, it's extremely important to develop a unique two-market strategy. Uh, because if we go up directly against RJR Reynolds or the Marlboro Company, uh, we just simply cannot compete. Because if, if we think about the size of the tobacco product market, it's roughly $500 billion in sales a year. So th these companies have unlimited budgets and, and, and markets in order to go out and, and, and compete in this industry and try to win the industry, though, though we find it a little bit ironic. Uh, so our web portal that we're opening up, and it'll be open by the time this show airs, will give you a little bit more specific details, but it's based on a network marketing philosophy or a multi-level marketing philosophy. And we can get into uh, uh, the industry and see so many success stories in, in, the, in this particular venue. Uh, the electronic cigarette is uh, very unique in this market because smoking is a very social part of life. Uh, and uh, most people that are smoking, there's still 80 million people smoking cigarettes. 95% uh, of them want to quit, and smokers know smokers. So, you know, there's just a lot of unique ways and uh, in, in so far as allowing this particular strategy to market to be very successful. And we also have a number of uh, partners in the multi-level marketing world um, that, that uh, we're excited to be working with. So hang on for another 10 days or so and when our website is open you all will have a very clear understanding as to what we're doing. But I do want to stress that uh, the marketplace, if it hits the 10 billion that they're projecting, <clears throat> regardless of what our goals are for our company, if we want to be one of the top players in the industry uh, or not, if we achieve a 5% market share of a $10 billion business, uh, it's a $500 million uh, in, yes. In, yes. In, in sales. And, and we feel really, really confident and we're glad that we're doing something different because if you don't do something different, it's going to be very hard to differentiate yourselves in this marketplace. That's the very exciting uh, story I heard from uh, Dan today, you know. So uh, also one more question is um, 
Um, there's another key component of online sales seems to be centering around ensuring that minors are not able to purchase those such products. How is your company addressing this concern? Yeah, so we feel when the guidelines come out from the FDA, which will probably be towards the end of this month, uh, this is going to be one of the key core focuses, is uh, to keep this product out of the hands of children. And I just want everyone to know that our objective in this, in this industry is not to follow in the footsteps of big tobacco and hook kids on the nicotine. Uh, our, our objective is to go after the 80 million people that are already smoking traditional tobacco cigarettes and give them a safer alternative to their product. Uh, so our two things. One, number one, our new web portal will be very secure and uh, kids will not be able to get onto our website and purchase product without proving their age and there'll be a number of age restrictions. Additionally, the distributors that we're working with we're going to know a lot about because they're, they're going to have to fill out a lot of information. So, so we're going to really be stringent with that. And, uh, and just one other point, on every product that we're selling right now to date, even though there's not a regulation out in the market telling, telling us what we can and cannot do, on every one of our products, we say f not for sale to people under the age of 18. Keep out of reach of children. So this product, you know, the way we look at it, is uh, to help the smokers, not to get new smokers on board. So okay. it's, very, it's a very, very important part of our strategy. Okay. Uh, my last question will be, I'm seeing several advertisements for your competitors on the major networks, such as ABC, NBC, NBC, CBS, and such. Can you give us some insight as to what this means for your brand? It, you know, it's twofold. Uh, number one, most of the major advertising that we're seeing out in the marketplace right now uh, are from the big tobacco companies. RJR Reynolds uh, is doing some really aggressive advertising. Uh, Blue Cigarettes is also doing some very aggressive advertising and they're, they're owned by Lori Lard, which is another very substantial tobacco company. And, uh, you know, the reason they're doing it is because of the growth potential you know, for their companies to make money. And while we also want to have a successful company and we want to have a profitable company for ourselves and our shareholders, we find it very ironic that the very people that have been selling a product that we know have been killing up to 1,500 people a day or 500,000 people a year are now coming into our marketplace and we would ask consumers like yourselves or people like yourselves to believe in the companies that are on the forefront of this product and not go ahead now and give a great deal of money or support to the companies that haven't really cared about their consumers over the years. One other point though is, and it, that's very exciting for us, is with all of this advertising, it's really heightening the consumer's awareness of the product. Mm -hmm. So uh, the more people that are aware of the product, uh, it, the, the more people will want to purchase the product, and the more people that will be able to put into business in their own distributorships through our network marketing program. So we're very excited every time we see an advertisement, and, and we're going to do a lot of things uh, along the way to parlay what, what Big Tobacco is doing and to give the consumer uh, and the distributors uh, an alternative on who they're going to work with. Okay, great. Um, so the audience have to remember Dan's uh, stock ticker is X, R, M, B, X, Ray, X like X, Ray, yes, sir. R like Richard, M like Mary, B like boy. So this is like I can call it multi-level e-cigarettes, am I right? It, the future it, of the multi-level e-cigarettes company. That, that is, That's that, the goal. Th that is absolutely right because uh, being unique is very important and doing your job right is very important. So if we're the first and the best, uh, there's no reason that this company won't be extremely successful. And we're going to start to see results relatively quickly. We should be able to start the implementation of the multi-level or network marketing within the next four to six weeks 
and, and are looking forward to some really exciting things in the first quarter of 2014. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Warren. I appreciate it. Okay.